As an RA, I've had the opportunity to view so many wonderful things, but perhaps none more wonderful than the invention of the app Yik Yak, an application much like an anonymous Twitter where users simply yak their thoughts to their peers at their college, an app which I've used mainly to anonymously troll my residents. For example, one time a resident yaked, just sent dick pics to my RA to show who the real alpha male is. LOL. To which I, as the RA, the naturally dominant one, responded to by saying, just showed this kid's dick pics to everyone. LOL. Understandably, my resident was a bit butthurt by my comments, which I found out when he yacked a link to an article from The Independent of May 30th, 2013, explaining that the culture of male dominance can largely be attributed to pornography. What I think he was trying to tell me with this yak is that I probably watch too much porn. So I thought about it for a little while, took a break to watch some porn, and thought to myself, wow, I have a really short attention span. But more importantly, I read a... Fuzzy. Uh, but more importantly, I realized he might be right. I can't tell you just how much porn I've seen in my life, because it's embarrassing mainly. But I can tell you that according to the U.S. National Library of Medicine, 88% of scenes in pornography feature acts of aggression. So maybe it doesn't take a lot of porn to be too much. The porn already, already negatively affects society and our view of women through its portrayal of sex. But what about how it affects the people who use it? Because if there's anything that Emma Watson's speech on feminism at the UN has taught us, it's that the first step to getting people to care about an issue is to show that they are directly affected. So here we are to talk about porn and the way it hurts the people who use it by flirting with some causes, picking up some effects, and casting some solutions to the problem with pornography. So first things first, we need to ask the question of why we watch so much porn. Well, there are two huge reasons. Accessibility and hypersexualization of culture. But first, accessibility. Unlike getting actual sexual partners, it's super easy to get a hold of porn. Compare that to the industry in the 20th century, where it took going to a store, buying a tape labeled The Sperminator, or Goodwill Humping, and making awkward eye contact with a cashier. Like this. <laughs> but times have changed and porn can be accessed with the click of a filthy button. Couple that with the sheer amount of pornography there is on the internet today. According to the Huffington Post of May 5th, 2013, 30% of all data transferred across the internet is pornography. Scientifically speaking, that means the approximate amount of porn on the internet is hella. There is hella porn on the internet. Even Barack Obama thought so when he said, you will find no safe haven from porn. I may be paraphrasing. But the fact of the matter is that it's ubiquitous. So it only goes to say that maybe, eventually, porn might become a relatively normal thing. Setting up the stage for our second cause, hypersexualization of culture. Now, I admit sexual liberation is a good thing. I'm all about ending slut shaming and I fully support sex education in our schools because there's nothing worse than an adult who still refers to this as their no-no square. But sexualization as we know it today is by and large just objectification. It's the reason that Hooters can stay in business despite its subpar chicken wings and terrible service. And let's face it, objectification is probably the reason that I got the RA job. Because I'm not very good at it, but I look damn good doing it. The fact of the matter is that sex is all around us. And in every one we do, every, 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 um, everything we do. That being the case, it's no wonder we're so obsessed with pornography. We're obsessed with sex. In another instance on Yik Yak, a user asked the question, what's something random that you find weird? I decided to respond, segways. Effects, there are two. Addiction and unrealistic expectations of our relationships. But first, addiction. While the debate on pornography addiction's reality rages on for four more hours, Dr. Mary Ann Layden, psychologist at UPenn, notes that the same criteria used to diagnose pathological gambling or substance abuse can be applied to problematic porn use. She argues that therapists who treat porn addicts say they behave just as any other addicts, minus the neck scratching and constantly asking to borrow your car. She said this after sitting in on a Senate hearing on, you guessed it, pornography addiction. That's right, the same people who tried to repeal the Affordable Care Act over 40 times have an interest in pornography addiction. Though when you try to repeal the same bill over 40 times, you might have an addictive personality. 
So I guess there aren't just a lot of jerk-offs in Congress, but a lot of people in Congress jerking off. And that's why Anthony Weiner resigned. <laughs> There's that toilet humor that you were waiting for when you found out this was a speech on pornography. But savor it, because that's the last that you'll get of it. Now, there are already a lot of things in our lives that are addictive, but those things miss one important factor that porn has. Unrealistic expectations that hurt our relationships. Something addictive like Facebook, for example, doesn't give me any expectations of real life. At all! There are things I can do in Facebook that I know I can't do in person. I can't go up to someone in public and poke them in the face and ask them if they want to be my friend, or if they want to be in a relationship. I've tried, and it doesn't work. Because it's creepy and weird. But porn has the unique problem of being a fantasy that we treat like a reality. Author Robert Jensen, author of the book Getting Off, argues that there's always been one fundamental belief in porn, that women are the objects of men's desires and serve the sole purpose of satisfying them. Women, your body belongs to you. Don't let anyone tell you that you're anything less than Hillary Clinton, but it's just as okay to be a Nicki Minaj if you want to be. And men, these expectations hurt you too. Because the more we watch pornography, the more desensitized we become to the fantasy, and the less satisfied we become with real sex. The fact of the matter, though, is that there are things you can do in pornography that you can't and shouldn't do in real life. Like having a midday office hookup. What soundproof building do these people work in? Now, addiction and unrealistic expectations that hurt our relationships are enough reasons that we should try to curb the trend. And here's how we do it. You can either be conscious of the problem, or you can quit altogether. If you're conscious of the effect pornography can have on you, it makes it a lot harder for it to affect you in the ways I've mentioned. The problem is, too many people are unaware of this. So it doesn't just end with you being aware of it yourself, but making those around you aware of the problem. So, start a dialogue about this. Talk about it outside of the round. After all, we're forensicators. We're all about communicating. Like this. This is nice. You talk, I listen. I talk, you do that fake head nodding thing. You can also be conscious of the type of pornography you choose to use, because not all porn is that problematic. Try choosing a category like couple, for instance, which tends to be much more realistic. Also, it's in such high definition that you can almost see their parents' disappointment, which is kind of cool. You can also quit altogether. I know this sounds difficult, but believe me, it's possible. And I'm not the only one who thinks so. In fact, recently a movement was started on Reddit, in which Redditors, who have made similar arguments to the ones I've made, argue that someone who's trying to quit pornography can get an accountability buddy. Much like a person who's trying to quit drugs gets a sponsor. You can use this accountability buddy as anyone to call at any time that you're facing temptation too strong. And it makes it immensely more easy to quit pornography. Which is why I've created a pledge to join the NoFap movement from Reddit which you can sign after the round. I've also created business cards to hand to you. In case you ever need an accountability buddy. Because you aren't alone. I'm on day 35. So maybe shaming my residents on Yik Yak wasn't the best policy to have as an RA. But if I wouldn't have done it, I wouldn't have found out I had a problem. And causes, and effects, and, and solutions to that problem. So, next year, I won't be returning as an RA for obvious reasons, but I also won't be returning to porn. I chose to quit, because one day, I'm going to have a wife, and I'd much rather make love to her than to someone I've only made up. <laughs>